We'll now call the six o'clock meeting to order. Moving on to item number two, invocation, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, 2.1, invocation. Councilman Phillips, would you give us our invocation? Everyone, please, please stand if you can. First of all, I want to thank you for this day. And thank you for allowing us to be elected to represent the people of Kansas County, the citizens of Kansas County. We ask that you be with us and give us the wisdom to make decisions that would be in their best interest, Lord. Thank you to Jesus who died for us on the cross. Um, we ask you to uh, forgive us for our sins, Lord. Uh, these things we ask in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. 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 First item 2.2. Councilman Wynn, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brings us item number three, adoption of the agenda and consent agenda, 3.1, consent agenda, 3.2, September 15, 2019, Hampton County Council meeting agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the consent agenda and the September 15th on Hampton County um, Council meeting agenda. Have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. Have a second. All in favor. Are there any further discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, likewise. The motion carries. First item number four, public hearings. We have no public <coughs> hearings scheduled this evening. Bless you. Item number five, public comments. Do we have anyone signed up this evening? Did you Yeah, I think a quick moment to recognize Representative Williams is with us tonight. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, Jim Brown. Mr. Brown. Good evening, sir. Good evening, and thank you for allowing me this morning to speak to you. I know several of you, but Jim Ray, Jim Brown, and my wife and I live between Hampton and Bethlehem. I've given each one of you a uh, field letter. You can open if you want to. If not, that's fine too. But it's for you. Um, and we'll share more information that I'm going to share. And to understand, I have about five minutes. Yes, sir. And for someone who preaches occasionally, he preaches many times, I need more than five minutes to know the same thing that's on my head. <laughs> anyway, nearly two years ago, I presented to this very council the need for chaplaincy across our county. Several weeks later, I received a letter thanking me for my concern and a statement that read we had no funds. I wanted to go on and the need still exists. It's not going to fix itself. And it will not get better without intervention. Today I'm back, and this time a senior chaplain of Chaplain 59 of Loka, a 501c3 nonprofit organization established for the purpose of providing emotional support to law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs, educators, pastors, and citizens in the event of a crisis. First up for our organization is to organize a network of chaplains in a five County area. Next would be to facilitate training for all interested parties who may be affected at any given time by a crisis. <clears throat> I'm here today to introduce myself and our organization to the council because Hampton County and the town of Hampton will be our base. I've provided each of you a to do an introduction letter explaining who we are and what our intent is. No questions. Thank you very much for your time. See, um, you say you have a commission or a chapter of chaplains. You represent a, a group of chaplains, or you just one of one? I am one now because we are going to start a nonprofit that just began on September the 3rd of this year. How many? Uh, 
How will that affect cost to us being a 501c? Well, it won't, it won't cost you anything. Uh, again, I'm simply looking at those that I'm here, and that I will be engaging uh, the leaders in our town, uh, law enforcement, firefighters, educators, uh, be setting up meetings with them and then facilitating and organizing training for those chaplains so that we can uh, be there for the people, uh, both again in those areas I mentioned, but also the average citizen in our county that needs help in the event or simply guidance. Uh, many times people are just looking for a listening ear, someone to listen to what they're feeling during their crisis uh, or post crisis event. Have you ever worked with a coroner and the real cases, like someone's murdered and stuff? Have you had any field experience or not? After, you know, after death notifications and things like that, if that's the answer to the question. It does. Jim Brown? Oh, the organization. That was what I was asking. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Probably, no. Probably uh, field box 789 hands and stuff. And all that is in the documentation I'm into that. And the name of the nonprofit is Chapel 59 of the Low Country. Right. Okay. Anyone have any additional remarks? I think you'll need it. I've um, been in some tough situations by just talking. So. Mr. Brown, got a card. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, he expressed to me the other day he uh, did not believe that he could stay within five minutes. And he, he did well. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Who do we have next? District 122, Representative Shedron Williams. Representative Williams, good evening. Good evening, all. 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 We've had some changes. There's some appointments we need here in the county with the coroner's office. And uh, my understanding, and hopefully, I'm correct, is that uh, there was a previous lawsuit of hopefully taking that as a non away. Not sure. Hopefully, and um, also just uh, received some information about two weeks ago that we were in the process, some form of fashion, of working out something with another situation here in the county. A couple of two, hopefully, that works out for the best of citizens. And then earlier today, I wanted to uh, mention something in that uh, uh, text perspective of the administrator just kind of clear some things where some citizens have been calling me um, that the county did some reassessments, some rezoning. We did the whole picture until previously, well, I think a couple of areas shot. Whereas, uh, particularly in the town of Brunson, where some individuals who were living outside of town are now being informed that they're living inside of town. And they're feeling that they were going to be forced to join the water system. I feel like I couldn't speak on it, but I would you know, bring to attention the town council of the understanding and information that I, if I can remember, a few of us as on council, we tried to make sure that that would happen to existing residents who were living in the area. Um, there's some time now, I'm not sure if this has been changed or whatever, but we're just hoping that's definitely not the situation. And that, uh, we can move forward. And the big thing is I'm here actually tonight to support Mr. Hutchinson and the Federal Palace Mobile Government. And I'm pretty sure he'll speak on it. Thank you all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> That's all, sir. That's all. That takes us to item number six approval of minutes, 6.1, August. 19, 2019, Hampton County Council Special Meeting Minutes. I presume that everyone has read the minutes. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes? So move, Mr. Chairman. We have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Motion carries. First item 6.2, August 19. 2019 Hampton County Council meeting minutes. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes? Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the, meet, the minutes of the August 19, 2019 uh, meeting. We have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. 
Is there any further discussion? If there's no further discussion. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Motion carries. Item number seven, presentation. 7.1, Ms. Sandra Leon, South Carolina Human Affairs Commission. Good evening. If you would pass those to our clerk. Yes, sir, we do. In other accounts. We have a lot of interest in the 
situations where someone said, well, I didn't know that person. I thought they were all set up, whatever, but after spending time together and working together, they have expressed an interest that, oh, I thought like this person was going to do some more things together. And it's just the OB and Allendale. They are really together over there. They have a lot of activities. They're involved in Lutheran Church. They're involved in youth. So they're, they're a good example of what I mean by that. Thank you for that report. Thank you for that report. Yes, no Thank you very much. That all sounds very encouraging. Thank you. I'm going to keep going with the That sounds great. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, we've got a sign-in sheet going around. We're we're applying for a community development block grant application for the Council on Aging, and should Council determine to do the um, resolution for this project. They would like to see that we actually had some people in the audience whenever the council um, heard the information. So, what are we talking about? It's it's later on your agenda. I just we signed oh. a sign in sheet going around, and that's all it is. Okay. Thank you. Seven point two, Ms. Catherine Doughty, SCA quarterly report. Mr. Chair, members of council, Catherine sends her regrets. Um, She's originally slated to be here tonight. Unfortunately, uh, her son is in the hospital in the U.S. City. She's been uh, dealing with that every evening, so she's probably planning on coming anyway. Uh, deal, deal. We'll express our concerns to her. Yeah. The situation. Well, um, fortunately, we're 36 weeks into the year already, but we are. Um, I'll take you through the highlights here, um, get a few of the numbers, and then get into the weeds a little bit of some things we're doing in Hanson County. Um, we started in 2019 with 44 projects and leads. Um, along the way, we picked up 54 new projects and leads. And uh, of those, I guess 98 projects were closed or reclassified 46. Uh, we still have 52 that are active on the books. Uh, I believe about 12 of those still active in Hanson County. Um, we have announced seven projects. Um, two of those, fortunately, in Hanson County. Um, of those amounts we generated 184 submittals for 61 properties, 48 different projects. Um, we've had 52 site visits to these 24 properties or about 23 different projects. 16 of those site visits were here in Hampton County. And uh, as I mentioned, we still have you know, around 50 of those that are still active. Um, i jump over to our marketing highlights. Um, we saw before economic development is very much a numbers game at the front end and the back end. Uh, on the back end, we try to make the numbers work in terms of incentives, but on the front end, um, it's all about the number of leads we can get in the door, the number of eyeballs we can get on our community. Um, just to kind of bring you up to speed with what we've done so far, um, we just got back from a mission in Canada, um, as well as the Paris Air Show, and a uh, site consultant luncheon where we saw about 40 different site consultants in the Atlanta area. Um, coming up, uh, we'll be in upstate New York and Ontario and Canada next week. Um, and we we'll also have a multi mission schedule for the Northeast, uh, as well as one for Europe, which is going to be Switzerland. Um, and also, we'll finish up the year in uh, Dusseldorf, Germany, and have another site consultant luncheon in uh, New York. Again, the idea of trying to bring as many leads as possible, as many eyeballs as possible, um, in our part of the country here. Uh, let me flip over a couple of pages. Um, some of you may have seen the uh, YouTube video, some of the video content that we've been circulating around. Uh, there was one on the South Carolina Industrial Campus, which is actually our most viewed uh, video on YouTube. Uh, all the ones we've put out so far. So glad to get that. Um, see that get a lot of traction. Um, we're continuing to work on that. Just trying to kind of uh, broaden our presence on social media with YouTube being part of that. So I encourage anybody to. Check us out on YouTube and uh, search Southern Carolina Alliance and take us to our page and uh, follow us if you like. Then we go down and talk a little bit about product development. Um, we've got, uh, of course, a picture of a new expansion in Hampton County. Uh, they are still on schedule looking at finishing that uh, down in December. And we've got some other stuff going on. We just completed a um, round of site enhancement grant. Um, four different communities are happy to announce Hanson was awarded $160,000 to uh, cover the design of our next spec building. Uh, speaking of spec building, uh, we have collected an architect, and uh, that spec building design is underway. Uh, give us an idea of uh, what we can expect in terms of cost and then 
given any uh, amount that over that amount what it would cost the county to do it. $160,000 is a good start, but you know what would be needed from us? Any projectile? projectile? Well, uh, you know, state building these days is running, you know, $2.5 million for a 50,000-foot building to uh, replace the old building. Could you give us some details? Well, I, I mentioned that there have been two that were already in the uh, way of the amount so far this year. Um, and that was uh, Southern Current and World Energy. Uh, we are hopeful that we're going to have one more to announce before the end of the year. Um, so we're thinking about 35 million dollars. And I'm glad to, to give you some more detail in the call session. You know, right. Of course. All right. Any further comments or questions for Mr. Strickland? We certainly appreciate it. If you don't mind, hang around. Um, a little later in the agenda, we're going to address the uh, team building workshop that you yeah. and I discussed and try to set some dates. Thank you very much. That brings us to item 7.3. Mr. Jack Hutto, Ms. Eleanor Murray. And Dr. Yolanda Gibbs, the Executive Director of the Palmetto Palace Mobile Health Unit. Good evening, uh, Chairman and Council Members. I'm here actually by myself tonight. Dr. Gibbs and Ms. Murray were unable to, uh, to attend the meeting tonight, so I'll do my best to, to provide the information and the folks with their questions. I'm not able to answer all the questions, but I'll do my best to find out that. But um, I am here with Dr. Rosalind Wilcox, who has been in the school district one, which is where I work. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you for a few minutes about the Town of the Palace local medical unit. Did everybody copy of the slide? Yes, sir. Um, I believe back in 2017, Dr. Gibbs actually came and spoke with the County Council. I'm not sure if there are those of you who might remember that. But the Town of the Palace local medical unit was rooted in support from the late uh, Reverend Senator Felipe Pinky. He, along with Dr. Gibbs, who is the executive director of the mobile medical unit, they recognize that there are certain people in rural areas that lack access to appropriate medical care. Um, his family was actually from um, the Jackson County area, um, and I think he had a personal story that brought him as well. But anyway, Dr. Gibbs um, came and presented information, and, and after that meeting, Dr. Wilcox and our school board came on as we need to coordinate services with this organization. And at that time, it was still in a, a process. This uh, unit wasn't um, ready and delivered until July of this year. And so uh, we, a number of us had to went to a ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, if you, as you see from the flyer, this unit is going to provide both dental and medical care. Specifically, this is about providing services for uninsured and underinsured. This is not about trying to take anybody's patient, um, but it but it will not be exclusive of those folks. Um, in other words, so if folks come with insurance, and they could they, they could be covered as well. I will say that this has been supported significantly by Representative Gilda Cobb Hunter. You actually see her picture on the on the vehicle there, in addition to our own um, 
that you've already identified a uh, Pinell Elementary in Memphis, so uh, uh, location in Houston. What, right, so what about Brunson and Esco? So, and, and, and I had actually mentioned that to Dr. Isaac Penn. Um, when this came to mind, the uh, Memphis Elementary Schools was the first place that I would have thought of that. But here's the turnout that she and I went through a master's program about 20 years ago. So we had a connection anyway. Hampton United Methodist Church has offered to provide support as a Hampton site. And, and Dr. Gibbs came last spring to speak about this. And we actually went to Esther at that time and met with, um, with Mr. Martin Wright, who's the superintendent, and some members of the faith based community over there who are very interested. So we hope this will just be a matter of, of spreading the opportunity to the other areas of the, of the county. Um, and then, of course, I would imagine, too, you know. If for some reason we see that one area is not getting as much um, service and there are other areas, all of those I would think could be um, negotiated. Okay. And maybe not just for the leading of our work without the house or anything, but just to provide, um, provide support. Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Hutto, yes. have you made any resistance from the hospitals and doctors in doing this? I haven't, and I haven't. And I did ask Dr. Gibbs about that. They have gone through all of the necessary channels. They actually in coordination with the USC. So there actually is a, um, I don't know if it says it on the slide, but there's a telehealth opportunity as well. So that when um, people need access to maybe other type of uh, resources that maybe aren't available, they will be able to work through the USC. But so to answer your question, I haven't completely consistent. I do know other counties. When I went to um, the Kentucky ceremony, um, Mr. Larry Goody, who is the chief general of Alder, was actually on, on there um, with his volunteer board. I know, like I said, Alder has already started providing services. And so I, I don't really see this as a conflict, and I hope folks won't either. This is really, like I said, trying to serve folks who maybe might not ordinarily be going to the dentist or to the doctor for whatever reason, or they don't think they can't afford it. And, um, that's what we just for your information, we have a dental center in the school district now. It's on the campus. Um, Bonwell Elementary, we'd love to invite you there to see that. So we have noticed over the last couple of years, this is our third year, we are seeing children that have um, 
Ron Burke, it's those children that we've had that they've had unfortunately removed, you know, the number of, of teeth because of rot in the case. We want to help prevent those kind of things. And that strictly is because, you know, parents aren't able to buy that type of support. And so like I said, we're we're about serving children and families. So I hope we won't have that kind of resistance, but well, no good deed goes unturned, you know. Yes. I want to applaudize for what you're doing um, with both programs. Uh, I know a, a lot of children that have gone to the one that you already have in place here. Uh, and uh, to my understanding, they'll actually provide transportation to do that as well. We do. I will say, um, as, whether you know or not, we work in cooperation with the Sheriff's Department. They had a vehicle that was retired uh, at mid fleet, and so uh, um, Sheriff Miles very graciously donated it to the school district. And so we are able to use that um, to, to, to go to the school, pick up the children. Our aim is to keep, we want children to be in class. But I, I just, uh, a personal um, story, my wife is a teacher. She called me and said, I've got a child who doesn't want to work. What can we do? And at that point, we didn't have a center. So we sent an activity box to Allendale where their center is. It ended up, they had a 14 permanent teeth. And so that was just the beginning of our, our, our relationship with the SNOP Center program. And those are things we want to support. So, okay. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, how will they schedule these? And, and that was another question. We, we're not sure, and I, that's something I, I have. Um, I'm going to find out. We don't know if there will be walk-ins or accommodation of walk-ins and, and scheduled visits. So that I've got, that's one of my questions too. I actually have a DC Gun Council last year. This is a walk-in as well. This is very well received, but a very similar question. Will this be utilized by children and adults alike or just children? As far as, no, I think it's, uh, adults primarily, but then I return children away. Okay. Um, I think the, the, the idea initially was that children would be able to come and stay with my children. Okay. You only have one unit? There is one unit, yes, sir. Councilman Hollingsworth, yes. Yes, yeah, Ms. Otto, uh, on, on SMILE's uh, general program, uh, are there any students from Hampton County School District 2 participating in SMILE? Not in this small program. They do have a number of, um, they, they have at least one or two programs, and I've been in cooperation for the choice, who is, I guess, not a kind of all over there. But of course, we never got to become more, more sure. district. So sure. in the future, we don't know what that will mean, but obviously, we're about to start children's families. So if we need to work through that, we will at the time. And I don't, I don't foresee that. But I, I'm pretty sure they have a dental center in the district. Okay. It's certified by a dental center. Okay, yeah, uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. Councilman, go. Uh, one other question, Mr. Uh, Cecil. Uh, how is this funded? So, this, you know, I, I, I guess through, in the Brooklyn Court, I have some information about that. I think through, I know that, I believe that there's some state funds on that there's a lot of donations, but no, at this point, like I said, they're not asking for any local funds, although at the meeting, I want to say is I've heard great things about Smile. Thank you. I've heard a number of great things. Just one thing, Council, and they might want to look into it. Uh, the county has allowed, I think, Buford Jasper Comp Health to utilize the Council on Aging, um, the area there, because there's plenty of parking, and so we have allowed that in the past. Okay, sure. And we, we, don't, we don't want to, there be any conflict with anyone, but we believe there's enough service for everybody. Yeah, and a little background. This was started by um, Senator Pinckney's wife and using donations and partnerships with NUSC and various other programs. Okay. I, th I think, um, just to make sure you, you understood the point she was making, we have the, um, the Council on Aging Facility. Yes, we have three. There's one in Yamasee, one in Estill, and then one in Hampton. So, yes, we're certainly, uh, we're certainly, uh, we're certainly uh, 
So those are all potential sites that you could utilize. That sounds good. All right, thank you very much. And okay, again, I applaud you for your efforts. Thank you. Bring this to item number eight, appointments, 8.1, Hampton County Zoning Board of Appeals. How many total seats do we have vacant there? Five. Five. And we have two applicants. Results be quick, so we'll wait on you. Okay. Yeah. The unanimous is Brian McDaniel and Mr. Sam Tracy has been appointed to the Hampton County Zoning Board of PA. All right. Thanks, ma'am. That brings us to item number nine resolution proclamation 9.1 Miss Barbara Johnson, LCOG, Hampton County Public Facilities Upgrade Senior Centers. Miss Barbara's not here tonight. And Ellen, did you send me the paperwork? Do we have anything in our packet on this? Yeah, she sent the um But say let you do anything about it. Yes, sir. This was um This is the next um for the next round for community development block grant. Um, okay, back on track. We had discussed in looking for different projects um, that are coming up in the Community Development Block Grant Avenue, and there's an opportunity there to go after some funding sources to upgrade the Council on Aging Facilities. Yes, sir. And we've looked at uh, the two, one in Hampton and one in Nestle, was built in 1991. They were built with community development block grant funds. And um, they are, we've done some maintenance, some upgrades to them, but there's an opportunity here to get some funding to improve energy efficient um, wiring, the HVAC, the um, technology aspect, and um, we're going to look and you know look and see what all we can do and fix up the buildings a little more. Any discussion on the MRC with the parking lot? And I understand it has a leaking roof too. Is that not correct? I've not heard anything about roof leaking, sir. The parking lot um, has been approved, I believe, by the transportation committee. They're going to pave that. And um, I know Mr. Hodge has been working on some drainage plans for that. The problem there with that with that area is something to do with the drainage. I, that's out of my well, wheelhouse. So. That one sit in a bowl. Um, yeah. It's a very odd situation, but uh, Public Works has uh, put rock in the uh, parking lot recently, so it's not slick anymore. They have decreased the amount of slope on the driveway coming in. Um, and I think yeah, they, uh, they plow some of these drainage ditches down there as well. Right. Um, while we're on the subject, all the uh, new signs are up for those centers as well. Mr. Chairman, do you know of any time schedules for having this event down at Gamacy? So the paving of the parking lot? Yeah, what is that? Um, I, do not. Five years uh, I do not. I do not. I attended two meetings ago for the Transportation Committee. And I had submitted the request to them uh, to get that parking lot paved because there was a lot of issues with the drainage and clay and silt washing down. 
and uh, they did approve the habit page. Um, there was no timeline set for it. There's an advertisement that ran in the paper a month ago, for three, four weeks ago, something like that. Okay. And so we are in the process of taking bids now. The way it runs the same way a state contract does because it's state money, and it, they will have up to a year to fulfill that contract. So okay. you're looking at a year, probably. You know, I mean, it seems like they want to get in, get it done, and move on to the next one, but they do have a year to do the contract. What do we need to do in regards to 9.1 this evening? I'd like you to adopt the resolution so that we can move forward with the application. At this point, it's just an application um, process. And this one copy of the resolution? We sent, I think everybody went, got a copy, didn't they? Oh, the first one copy. Oh. Yeah, we just have one for all five of us. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, so. this is again. I yeah, I didn't have. Oh, um, before you get started, yes, sir. On, on the resolution, I want to ask a question about the uh, Senior Citizens Center. What is the status of the signage in Esther? Uh, they're up. Oh, they're up. Oh, they're up. They're up. Okay. They okay. are up. Okay, good. They were put up. I'll take a look at them. For, um, it's not just a raggedy wood sign like we've had in years past. Uh -huh. These are really nice, durable okay. signs. We right. actually um, it's about time. went to one of those vinyl one of the vinyl companies, sure. uh -huh. and it's it's more I guess it's classified as a wrap. Oh, okay. But okay. it should be very um, sustainable. Okay. Of course, now the two sides we had. Now remember, they went up in '91. Yeah. But they yeah. held up yeah. a regular right. yeah. while. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's great. Because uh, I was uh, someone inquired about it several weeks several weeks ago. And, and they they and, have and been. I, I think they coming. went up about three weeks ago. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Two weeks right. ago. That's something that's like good. that. Great. Great. Okay. Yep, that was on my list. We'll take a few more moments to read over this resolution. Okay. Yeah, I think Ms. Barber was supposed to, she was bringing all that tonight and then came up last minute. She couldn't come, so she just emailed it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the yes, third, third bullet, could you explain that to me? The completion of this project was going to benefit approximately persons with at least 51 percent of low income and the proposed project could you tell me what's going on at those centers um we'll refer back to the administrator she went over that a moment ago but could you re-explain that to her part of the qualifications for community development block grant funds is you have to um can i look back at the copy okay. that you have to you have a copy down there benefit Fit at least 51 percent of the population. Yeah, I can I can pull it up on my phone. I think. That's that's no, sir. It's just that's a that's a qualification for receiving funding. Is 51 percent of your population that you serve has to be 51 percent low to moderate income. It, it's a qualification for receiving any type of grant monies from. Community Development Block Grant. But the designated fund is the Hampton Senior Citizens, Hampton, Vaughanville, and Brunson, Estill Senior Citizens, Estill, Gifford, Scotia, and Farmer, Nixville, and Lena. What, that's an ambiguous, 51% of that amounts, what you're referring to, population. Mr. Wendt, this simply means that 51% of the individuals that go to the center are, 50, are low to moderate income. Okay. And typically what we get are our, most of our seniors probably average around 72 or higher. Um, we more than qualify to meet the 51% income levels for the people we serve. What was the other bullet point you asked about? The amount of money that's going to come into view for helping. What is it, what is the limitation of the fund to, to qualify what center you work on? We can apply to up, for up to a half a million. And the county's match would be 10%. Um, what we're looking at, I don't believe is going to be anywhere close to that. 
we had thought we could use these funds to actually expand the centers. They have um, disallowed that use, so that's brought the project down considerably. Okay. Just for upgrading. Just it's just for um, energy efficient uh, technology upgrades. That's what different rounds you can get monies for different things, and that's all this one is. If we move down to item number two on that numerically, <clears throat> that appears to be for something entirely different. And am I reading that correctly? Item two. <clears throat> Yeah, that's for demolition. I was under the impression that the county was already underway with something for demolition last year. Is that correct? There won't be any demolition. I don't see that on this one. On the it's on the printout right here. On the bottom of the page. Mr. Roy, do you have a copy? No, 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 no. I'm sorry, I thought. Did you share that with anybody? It's different than the one I got. Yeah. That doesn't say anything about demolition. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. That's a typo. She apparently didn't catch that. That's for the last project. So I was reading it because I knew what it was supposed to say. So that just okay. my brain just went to what it was supposed yeah, so to say. This number two is for what? This would be for the Hampton County Council on Aging project. Is what it should read. Miss Barbara just made a typo. Uh, this is that time frame. We need to pass this tonight. We need to pass this tonight, and then we can just get the council to, um, we can clean this up tomorrow and get the chairman to sign it. But that's all, um, what she did was cut and paste it and didn't make the correction. Okay. We did the demo, the demolition was the last project that we did, and so that's all. So, you're saying in number two there's a typo, or number two shouldn't have been there, period? Number two should simply be just the, we're committing for the 10% total grant match mm -hmm. um, for the Hampton County Council on Aging, uh, probably be called renovation project, I guess, or upgrades. Okay. I'm not exactly sure. All right. I'm okay with that as long as we, if a motion comes up, the, the correct language is added. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be, tonight. like the, my brain saw it as what it was supposed to be, not what it is. Okay. So. I understand that. We will not sign it until that has been satisfactorily corrected, right? Absolutely, yeah. We right. we couldn't send it in like this. Okay. And, and this is an upgrade of all the senior centers we can. Just the ones in Hampton and Estill. They're the ones they were constructed in ninety one. The one in Yemasee was is not that old and the um the appliances and stuff in there is doesn't meet the regs to replace them. So this only applies to Hampton and Hampton and Estill. So a half a million dollars? No, so what I said was we can apply for up to, since they're not going to allow an expansion um, that brings the project down a good bit. We're just going to be doing some, um, you know, energy energy efficient technology upgrades. Upgrade of facilities. Right. Why is there a need for it to be passed tonight? What is there a law? Because you have a grant guide de deadline, and this is... The deadline. So in order to meet the deadline, we would have to approve it. Right. The application has to be in. Um, actually, I think it goes to the COG board at their meeting this month, which okay. is next Thursday. So, so in board. essence, all this is for is upgrades to the senior centers so they can better serve the seniors. Right. Okay. So when council did their, um, their need, this was one of the top top needs was improvements to the council on aging facilities. Mm -hmm. um, this is one way to, to get it done using at least tax dollars. Okay. There was a need to get Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, we This was known well ahead and we should have had time to evaluate it and have it worded properly before. And a no call is not going to accept it at this point. But no signature was must. Mr. Wynn, this came from low cost. So low cost, low cost, yes. 
This came from LOCOG this way. Okay. Ms. Newton got it as an email today. Is that correct, Ms. Newton? You received it today? Correct. Right. So that's no fault of any value of ours at this time frame. For the LOCOG prepares these applications. They, they're doing them for four counties. Some of them go down to the wire. Okay. All right. Um, do we have a motion for this resolution with the needed correction in the language? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that uh, we approve the resolution with correct language being in place on the uh, upkeep of right. our senior oh, pending dollar. Mm -hmm. Senior building. All right. We have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. There's nothing guaranteed about getting this amount. This is just we're making a petition for. That's right. But I also like to identify waiting it so long from the little call to let all to be sent to them about giving us more notice to digest. Understood. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Motion carried. Moving on item 9.2, Friends of the Arts Bylaws. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this process was well underway last year. And I think uh, when I was on the other side of the desk last year, I think I saw uh, uh, or someone had made a presentation to council. Yes, it went year. through first reading and second reading um, when it the question was asked if it needed to be an ordinance or a resolution. And then it actually we had the public hearing and third reading was delayed for some reason and this is one thing that um, we needed to follow up on and get done. So that they could go forth and continue to have events and raise money and do good things. All right, expanding on what you just said, uh, you said third, it was public First, second reading, there's a public hearing, but no third reading. Tonight, this is under section of resolution and proclamation. Right. The county attorney and uh, Mr. Brown, like I said, this came back up, and upon review, they determined that it really just needed to be adopted by council by resolution. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Why are we voting on this? Because that's a commission. We've, we've discussed it, but also there's a lot of, I've asked a question about who owns the building. Mm -hmm. I have not been satisfied to address in writing on who owns the building, not somebody's opinion or uh, under their obligation. But there's no proof to me that we have ownership of the building. What are we doing in this and with a commission file? Well, I, can't, I, can't in, I, I can't address those details in open session tonight. Uh, all that discussion was previously by the two attorneys in well, executive session. Well, I know you are. This I, is I just a heard public meeting. You. Right. And Not nothing to do with that. Well, I certainly can't ex discuss what was discussed in executive session out of executive session. Um, anyone else have anything to add or question? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, being that um, we, are, we are not the, the county is not the governing body of the arts, right? The county is the governing body of the Hampton County Arts Council. The And actually, the Friends of the Arts is not the Friends of the Arts. It is the Palmetto Arts. Um, we're trying to clean up some of the other issues with the 5013C for the, for the group. And I think the question at the time from the council was to make sure that the Friends of the Arts followed the Arts Council, almost a, a mirror-like image, so that the county did maintain, um, a, not control, but influence, and have more contact with the program going on. 
So basically, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Yes, sir. Basically, you're being friends of the arts to this you, what do you call it? I don't have it in front of me. What's it? The Palmetto. Palmetto. So you change it from the Friends of the Arts to this. The Friends of the Arts is under 503. Now, all of them in the talk. Now, you eliminated, and the money's involved in it, and the bylaws and everything. How can you proceed with this when it's out of order? No, sir. According uh, to our attorneys, it's not out of order. In fact, this is the correct order. And an effort to clean it up from uh, this is nece this document's necessary, and the renaming is going to be somewhat necessary. And renaming is the issue. You say that is the issue? What is the issue with the change in the name? It's a new entity and doesn't resolve the issue of what's going on. Where the money is that in the Arts Council? It's going to take, but doesn't. Is there any entitlements? What is what is the legal process by the AG, the Attorney General of South Carolina, reading on it? I would like a copy of his reading on it. All right, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure we were given an update on all that in executive session again by the attorney. As far as the money in the Arts Council, all of that's uh, listed in our budget for this year. All all of that's accounted for. Anyone else have any questions or anything to add? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the um, Friends of the Arts file. All right, we have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to go on record that we are out of order and that um, it's not pertinent to us to get involved into an issue that we can't prove we're puffed on it. And I would like documentation from the Attorney General of the State of South Carolina on how to handle this. All right. In writing. Do we know? Would you send this personally to him, to Mr. Ms. Donna? If you, no. if you will, just get with Ms. Elliott and tell her exactly what you're requesting, and we can go, go from there. We'll make sure we get the request. It'll be done. All right. If there's no further discussion, all in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Abstain. Oh. All right. Motion carries. Item number 10, ordinances. Third reading of ordinance. We have no third readings this evening. Item 10.2, second reading of ordinance. There's no second reading scheduled this evening. Item 10.3. First reading of ordinance, we have 10.3.1, sale of Ruth Jones Dialysis to Hampton Regional Medical Center. Um, Mr. Chairman, before you get into any discussion of the first reading of this ordinance, yes, sir. Uh, I ask to be uh, recused uh, from this particular uh, discussion due to the fact that I serve on the hospital board mm -hmm. for Hampton County, and uh, uh, I ask that uh, I step out and if I have a discussion on it, and once you finish, I'll come in. And All right. Out. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you have to fill out a form. Uh, if I know one's in it, then. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm just now getting ready to get here. All right. So, Thank you. We just got the agenda today. Well, the agenda was emailed. Um, let's see. Yeah. Where's this at? I will compliment on this one thing with the councilman that I'm not present to be in here discussing the issue that he was possibly about to be involved. I respect. Thank you. Has everyone read over the letter of intent? Uh, Thank you, Chairman. I've read it. Um, my only question is um, um, how much do we have in the property? We paid the two forty for it, and we had the sixty. The additional sixty thousand is still sitting in the bank. Now you say we paid two forty. Does that include the closing costs? Yes, sir. All right. So two hundred forty out of pocket. Yes, sir. I, I just didn't want to so settle less than we had in. We yeah. must assume that we must include the price three hundred thousand dollars for it to be a proper motion. Um, no, sir. You're only selling. You're, you're selling it to the hospital for two forty. 
because we still had the 60000 in the bank. The that hospital. 60, that 60 plus the 240 for the purchase agreement would pay the pay USDA pay off back. the 300 that was borrowed previously. The hospital did not pay us. I mean, we did not pay $300,000 for it. The county borrowed 300 what was the original loan for three hundred thousand dollars? Right. Uh, the, the motion must be in in, in all the amounts and how it's distributed for any sale. And no, what? sir. The motion for this is to sell the building to the Hampton Regional Medical Center for two forty. And then also, I think to expand on what Councilman Wynn said, if the sale goes through. Immediately, once we receive the two hundred forty thousand, we would take that two hundred forty thousand plus the sixty thousand we still have that the county borrowed last year, and the whole three hundred thousand would be paid off. Right, right. Well, we paid off. Not earmarked, we paid off. Note would be paid off. Right, the whole three hundred thousand. And USDA is back. fully aware of all of this. So, how much interest we paid so far? Have it didn't here. accrue until I have to go back and check. I don't know. But it was at three point. <clears throat> First payment was not due to be made until February. Coming up. So next year? Okay. So there's no payments been made on that note as no. of yet. All right. All right. Do we have a motion? Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve this sale. Um, that we do not have any more money than what we did now. All right, we have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Motion carries three to one. Too much conflict of interest. All right. Takes us to item. Let somebody get Mr. Mr. Hollingsworth. That brings us to item 10.3.2 USDA bond for hangers. Yes, sir. Uh, ask to get title only. The attorney sent the title for the ordinance. Uh, it's under number four in your packet. And by the second reading, they will have all the documents um, prepared. Oh, and you said it was number four in the packet? It's number five. Jack Wood, Chairman? Number five. For nine, five. Number four. Well, mine says four. Four. four was anyway, it's good. Five. That's it. Okay. Okay. Mine says four. Give us just a moment to read over this. I printed this off in email. So if there's something different. Would you like to take a brief moment to give us an explanation on this ordinance? Council has, um, in essence, we've gone through the process of Submitting the application, council has done the resolution. At the last meeting, council um, did the resolution to accept the funding. USDA is a very complicated uh, process, but you know you can't borrow this kind of money uh, for this price anywhere else. So it's worth going through the, you know, the, um, all the hoops you've got to jump through. We've got tonight, we've got to do a uh, first reading, and then we'll have all of the paperwork to you by the next reading. All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. When uh, the lady was here giving testimony, she said there will be a 10% in case they find something that they are uh, open in contract where they would increase it by 10% if it was necessary. That's not really yet. Non even is the amount of interest. What percentage is it? Is it two percent, eight percent? Neither is that mentioned. So the is that the interest? interest rate was in the minutes that we approved earlier. Well, what are they? Four uh, and a half. No, it's three point no. eight. 
3.5. Yeah. And you're going through the USDA to do it. Yes, sir. It's 3.5, and if the interest rate does drop by the time the actual third reading and the closing is done, we will get the lesser. Okay. It does not. It does not go up. So there's no more. It would be no five. more. That's in the USDA regulations. All right. What is, what happened to the 10% open end contract? The 10% is merely. She explained that that's merely the contingency that's built into the project. The contracts will be addressed whenever the the bids are done and the contracts are brought in. And USDA has. Uh, they will approve all. Council will approve the um, low bid, and then we'll send it to USDA, and they still have to sign off. So eventually, it may rise up 10 percent above this cost on the original. No, sir. In the application, yes. no, sir. In the total of the total, 10 percent is contingency. That's in any project you do, you have a contingency. You hope you never use it. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. I think trying to explain what Mr. Williams, uh, Councilman Williams question is that 10 percent is part of that total price in this ordinance correct right and so it's, yes, sir. it's not 10 percent if we go above it's included um, if we don't need it then that number goes down it does not increase the issuance and the sale of not exceeding means it does not go above 2.666 million it's, it doesn't go up over that that 10 percent is part of the budget and I believe everybody got an email that had the project in it. it so to address your concern, Councilman Wynn, in that first sentence there, it says not exceeding. So it can't exceed that. It could be less, but it can't be more. And you're borrowing this from the, from the, you're not from Hampton County or anybody around it, from the USDA. It's from USDA. Well, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to integrate. I would like it proven to the council, or uh, more especially to me, that it's referred to that um, we're going to receive taxes off the of anchor and the fuel. And uh, how is that going to equal to almost $3 million by the time we get it paid off? on taxes and the fuel so will this not indefinitely lead to the taxpayers paying for the bill of it if they fail? One, there won't be any taxes on hangers because the county's going to own them, we're going to rent them. Um, in, in the application that you've gotten a copy of, all of the budget um, documentation is listed in there, the number of hangers, how much they're going to rent for. We do there will be an increase in the sale of fuel. Anybody that has a hangar in there, um, it's a Hampton County resident, they will have to pay taxes on the airplane. If they are, they won't. If they don't live here, no, sir, they won't. They they can they have the option of paying it wherever they live. Um, but at this point in time, all of the hangars that we've got rented out are local. And have you signed Taxpayers. contracts to people that's agreed to it and signed to it where you go wrap these things? Yes, sir. Or just the essay? We've been through, no, sir. We've been through may, this question may before. Just, may you provide a copy to the council? Available at any time. To the council, I'd like to see who they are and whether they agree to pay X number of amount. This is business. This ain't here, sir. All right. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Do we have a motion in regards to this ordinance? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we uh, accept the, um, that we approve the ordinance for the bond, USDA bond for the hangar. We have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. <clears throat> we have a proper motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Motion carries four to one.
We're moving on item number 11, bids. We have no bids this evening. Item 12 point, or item, item 12, council briefing. 12.1, county attorney's update. Uh, attorney Solomon has stepped out. 12.1.1, report, reports on the coroner's lawsuit. The report on that was that that um, suit has been dropped at the court level and by the other party. So that is in the history book. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, can I get a, um, a report from the legal team from the administrator on that um, lawsuit? Do we have yes, any? I don't have anything written. Mr. Solomon sent something out by email um, last week, I think it was. Uh -huh. Yes, it was last week. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that would not come to me. It came through the attorney. Okay. So but it, it. As, far as, as far as I know, um, the word came down from the court that it had been dismissed. Okay. So, I just wanted to know basically how much the legal fees were. All right. You have, I have no idea on the coroner's. I mean, that's question. What, I mean, you had two that was in front of us. I just want to know the legal right. cost of the both of them. But I can, I can go back and look for both of them. Because yes, I don't sir. have that information. I, if, if, if you could get that for me, please, ma'am. Okay. Because yes, yes, I right. know we did sir. go with outside counsel on uh, Miss Catherine. We got to turn him on Barnes. Barnes. I'm going to have to disagree with you there. We don't have plenty of money for lawsuits. Well, um, I would also like the out of pocket cost of taxpayers. All right. I think that's the same thing that Mr. Uh, Councilman Williams is asking for. Dollars and cents. All right. Bridges item 12.1.2 Decision on proposal for company two. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the Hampton County uh, Airport Commission um, from the Chairman uh, Jack Woodward. Uh, the letter was dated September 16, 2019, that, um, that deals with uh, rejecting the proposal um, that was uh, presented to us for Company 2. All right, we have a proper motion. Do we have a second? A second. <clears throat> we have a proper motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I got a few. All right, Mr. Councilman Lynn. What was done was unethical, and you didn't have proper representatives from both sides. This was only included the council and the lawyer. What you brought in here was unorthodox and unethical. There should have been no testimony but from the lawyers and to the council. I suggest you take that up with Judge Butler. Uh, no word. You take care of it in the next court case. I'm certain he will. But he said this, uh, and I quote, he asked if the administrator supported it, and she said she did. That's correct. But not the part of that vote. So you have contradicted yourself with no representation. If you went that route, you should have brought in more expertise that can go on both sides. All right. Exactly. Well, from, the, from the national level, it's a bit of that kind of work and expert. You should vote in testimony for it. The chairman. He said no. Chairman. All right. Yes, sir. 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 It is. And I have to warn you again, the stuff that we, uh, certain items have to be discussed in executive session. So let's try to stay on track with that. Anyone have any further questions or comments? You boys are outstandingly doing a fine job for the wrong side. Legal. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, on the ruling that the judge had sent us, uh, and the administrator had agreed to go along with the judge, I feel that, you know, I think it would be appropriate that we follow the judge with all of that. That's my perception. That's how I look at it. So we can get out of this. Right. Cause we got no things we got to do. This is old stuff, later, on, man. We don't need to carry it to the public. I mean, that's how we can. Yes, sir. The administrator says she went with the judge. I'm gonna go with the judge too. And I would 
like to make a comment. This is now a public section and it's open up for discussion. Go ahead and say it again. Try not to be so aggressive in demeanor. It's not exactly conducive to a meeting. Like Mr. Holland was. <laughs> Uh, that's that's completely uncalled for. Let's not be animated and juvenile. Okay, juvenile. All right. Any further discussion or questions? All right. We have all in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Motion carries three to two. That brings us to item 12.2, clerk's update. 12.2.1 boards and commissions update. Ms. Newton. Yes, sir. Um, I said that I would have an update for you all tonight, but I need to move it to the next meeting. I have some more um, confirmations that I need to make because I want to make sure everything is quite accurate for you all. Okay. What she's, what she's discussing, what she's been working on for quite a while now, is trying to identify all the term lengths and everything for all boards and commissions under the county council. And once she gets it all identified and everything on track, then there won't be any more problems in the future. Anytime someone needs to know these things for their commission, it'll be readily accessible. And so you're saying you'll have that for us at our next meeting? Okay. Item 13, reports to council, 13.1, administrator's report. Uh, yes, sir, on the uh, employee update. We uh, lost another full-time firefighter. Uh, they want more than eight hours, you know, 48 hours a day, 40 hours a week that the grant allows them to get. They all go and work the uh, 48, 24s, or the 12-hour shifts. So um, I guess right now we're going to be a training ground for firefighters. But um good thing is most of them still live here and they still volunteer with the local department. Um, we have gained another firefighter, we, so we basically we recruiting our own. Um, Sheriff has filled an open position that he had, and we have filled a basic EMT position. So okay. we're, I think we're Let's have brought the staff there. Excuse me, I didn't quite hear all the details about the firefighter. I said that oh, we is um, the six is the permanent ones or the one that volunteers this afternoon. We have the grant. We employ six full-time firefighters. Right. The grant, they only work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. But they're getting that, right? Yes, sir, they're okay. getting that, but most of these guys, they want to make, they can go to work for Beaufort County, Jasper County, Collin County, and they can make 48 hours. They work 48 on, 24 off, um, which pays a lot more money because they're pretty much guaranteed overtime. Well, they share profit anyway, don't they? you know, work back and forth to different departments in different counties. They do, but they can't work full-time both places. Right. And um, so right now, but we do have, you know, some other young guys wanting to step up and, and. Um, so is it typically when we lose a firefighter for whatever reason, um, is it pretty easy to fill that void? The baby was out of sex. Well, it depends on the level of certification. I mean, any of them that we get are certified. And um, some of them that we've lost had more certifications than others. But, you know, it just takes a while if they put in somewhere else to, you know, to get hired. And, um, you know, we, we understand that. They're going for, you know, more money. More, you know, it's more hours, but it's more money, and they have to drive. So um, it's, it's pluses and minus. And you know, some of them they do they do decide. We've had a couple come back because it takes them away from their families, and they find out you know they can't quite get back here from Beaufort to go see their child in a play or play ball or something like that. So it's you know it's kind of a give and take, and it, it depends on what age a lot of times they are and the age of their children. Okay. Um, but if you invite. Um, Really, is not hard to replace a a paid firefighter. It's not easy. Um, you know, it's um, it's kind of like anything else. You have to, you know, find individuals that you know willing can get certified if they're not already certified. We've been lucky; most of the time, they're already certified. Um, 
But again, we continue, you know, it continues to be a, a door. So we didn't have a lot of problems signing when we first got the grant, did we? No. But again, you know, in the, in the same time frame, uh, Beaufort County has added additional stations. Jasper County has added additional stations. Jasper County has added additional um, full-time positions. And um, Hardyville has actually put in another station. So it's, you know, you've got, you've got the same pool, but you've got more people, you know, reaching in the pool. Obviously, the, um, I don't want to use the term better, but, you know, the more, uh, more qualified, more, qual more um, qualified, more classes, you know, going to go to the top. I know we hate to lose them, but it's hard to drive hard to like what they do. Tell me about it. It is. <laughs> that's, that's, but see, they go down there and they work 48 and 24 hours. But then again, you know, it's hard to do. Yeah. It's supposed to end. Well, they go, they work right to the interstate every day. I understand both sides. Do you have anything else to add on your Yes, sir. Um, council had discussed, I believe, uh, Councilman Williams only um, wanted to have a retreat, particularly on the succession plan, and there was one other item I thought, but I can't remember what it was, before we did public hearing and third reading. So we need to schedule a time for that. And then um, I think the chairman had talked to Mr. Strickland about a, um, kind of a team building Program building workshop. Workshop. Yeah, it will likely be ongoing, um, uh, not just a one park session. Uh, so we need to pick dates on both of those. A number of people have expressed to me that they would prefer uh, like Thursday evenings maybe versus Saturdays. Uh, so no one's having to tie up their weekends for workshop. I'm certainly okay with Thursdays. Um, with the team building workshop, it's very beneficial as well because Mr. Strickland is already going to be in town versus having to drive to town. Uh, yeah, as we know, he's got a newborn baby. He's got to spend some time. Um, the only problem I have with uh, the some Thursday, the last Thursday of the month, mm -hmm. I was going to promise you. All right, so can we just scratch that one off the calendar? And no comments. What, what's the last, last Thursday? The third Thursday, I think. I'm, I'm also got conflict, but the other two is fine. Well, what about Wednesday? What about Wednesday? Church night. Church night. What about first and second Thursday? There are everyone free on those? No, third is when I'm tangled up. I can come to the third and fourth. You can come to the third and fourth, but not the first and the second? Is that what you're saying? No, I can. The third Saturday third is the only one I can. Okay, so you are available on the first and the second Thursday. Yeah. All right, I think we're all available first and second Thursday. Um, so when would that be? Obviously not this Thursday. Uh, would everybody be available next Thursday? No, that's one in there. So we're looking at October. It'd be October 3rd. So while we set up the two consecutive Thursdays, the first two Thursdays, would one of those work for you? Yeah. All right. Let's take first Thursday and for the council retreat so we can address the administrator succession plan. And then yeah. the second Thursday in October, we'll do the team building. Okay. 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 Does that suit everybody? Okay. Uh, what time? Five, five o'clock is about the earliest I can be, be here. How about five after nine? nine? Ooh, not nine. No. Take about five thirty or five fifteen? Yeah. Let's do five fifteen to seven fifteen. Does that work for you, Mr. Strickland? Or seven nine. Yeah. Take that. Yeah. Uh, well, it takes for the team building workshop, let's do that at Southern Carolina Alliance office on uh, Main Street since Mr. Strickland offered us. That'll be the tent. Yes. We'll send out reminders. Okay, now the third, first Thursday is going to be the retreat. Yes, sir. Okay. Second Thursday. And the team building workshop on October 10th okay. is at 515 also? 515. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Yeah, I would love for it to be something that kind of mirrors some of what I've been exposed to in the Economic Development Institute. Yeah. I definitely haven't just been through the advanced symposium. I've got some ideas. And I think probably have some curriculum. Okay. All right. That sounds good. All right. Anything else? Um, I was going to um, see Representative Williams has left. The issue with um, Brunson, I've not heard anything from any of the other um, municipalities. One of the things with technology and technology getting so advanced mm -hmm. is with all of the GPS and all of the GIS, you're, if you buy a piece of property, you know, and the town's all kind of, everything was kind of drawn out, you know, in a circle, so it wasn't exact. Well, now every, everything is pretty much exact within about two feet most of the time. And you've got some people who for years in Brunson didn't pay town taxes because they weren't in town. But when you actually take the coordinates that's done from the um, surveyor, and all this is done by computer and, and everything, it plugs in, we have a couple of... Um, that I know of residences that are actually in the town. How pleased are they with that? Uh, not. <laughs> but, um, you know, as I explained it, their recourse is to go to the town. You know, the, the town is a process the towns have if you want to not be in town. Can you, once you've been annexed, <clears throat> you know, there's a process if you're out of town and you want to be annexed. There's a process if you're in town, and of course, you know, you have to be on the fringe areas. Um, but there is there is a legal process. I've not had any, I've never dealt with it, so I don't know, but I know there is one. All right, and the reason I ask that, because I did not see that when I was reading the handbook a couple of months ago. I just, I know that, I just know of an issue in Ridgeland mm -hmm. where somebody wanted to be in town, so they did a petition and got in town. And now they decided they want to be out of town, mm -hmm. so they have to go through the process to get out of town. So. Well, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. What is the question of this fellow had his own water supply and he didn't want to get on the water system? I, I don't understand all of that because if That's it. That's what I heard. If it, I, when I answered his email, in his email it stated the property was purchased in 04. If his. If it is an existing residence, something that was already there, it does not change. Um, in other words, they can't, they do not, cannot make you join. In other words, if if I was not on water and sewer, they cannot make me sign on. If I have a lot next door that doesn't have a house on it, and I build a house, yes. The ordinance that Brunson agreed to, you That's have to tie in. It's a town ordinance, and it's um, yes, each one of the towns, each one of the towns that joined in, I asked did that. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I asked a question first when the water system was put in that line that the people that didn't want to participate, they would not be forced, and they said no. Now I didn't get nothing in writing, but I think it's in our minutes. Yeah, I think that's what Miss Elliott was just saying too. As long as you have an existing residence, if then you wouldn't have to tie in. But if you just had a vacant lot and you build a new residence, then you got to tie in. Right. That's and that's that's pretty much. I mean, that's standard with any 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 water system, even um the town of Estill or town of Furman. If you build a new residence, build a new structure, business, house, whatever, um, their ordinance, you have to sign on. You have to sign on. And that was my understanding when I was on the water authority. Um, they emphasized the same thing. That's what was uh, explained to me in the most recent uh, water authority mm -hmm. meeting I was at as well. Mm -hmm. right. And um, I just didn't realize it was established by individual ordinances. 
Yeah, each town and, and the county had to do an ordinance to turn over property. Um, so the county has that same ordinance? Same. Ours is a little different because we didn't actually, the only thing we had to actually serve anybody was in the industrial park. Yeah. I mean, all, all, the only asset we had was actually the water system. Because the, the sewer, it the sewer, there be a need for that in the county. Yeah, the sewer belonged to the mm -hmm. that was in the park. Right. So it, we didn't. No, the county did not. Okay. Ours is a little bit different. So there's no ordinance like that in the county. Not it was done by Hampton County Council. There is one for each one of the towns. Right. But I, 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 my specific question, I, I stated it wrong. The unincorporated area. Now, 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 isn't there a water and sewage from Gilford to Brunson? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, you just so, put it in. So yeah. I know that goes from Brunson to Gilford. And my understanding, anyone that builds a new home, they, and, are, yeah. and tap it, then they have to tap into that water system. Even the ones that the are already there. The ones and, that, yes, and the yeah. unincorporated. Right. Well, there has to be a, uh, It's not it's done through the water county. authority. I don't think it's huh? done. I don't think the county did an ordinance for that. No, I, I think it's done through the water authority. Yeah. So the water authority has because that's their authority system. over the residents, like that that would, yeah. with that kind of stuff. Those who um, build a new home mm -hmm. with the existing system that they have put in. I have to go back and pull the ordinances because it's been a long, it long time. Odd. To me, because I, mean, I, I wouldn't assume that the uh, water authority is a governing body for our residents. I thought they were just relying on the service. When I say no, the line between war, between Brunson and, and that's Gilbert. only a water line. Oh, oh it's one water line? Yes, yeah, just a water, water line. line. And, um, I didn't know it was water and sewage. I, and, I actually, water line. and actually, it's just a. Um, That was put in because we got the grant money to assist with right. it, but it was done because so we get fire hydrants out now, correct, there. Correct me if I'm wrong. So if I'm they, wrong. those those but, individuals. But, but I know I know that they did have a discussion on that. Right, but those individuals do not have to tie in because so it's, it's just, just water. It's on new. It's on so new build a home. I think so. I think so. I mean, I was under pressure somebody new build a home. I think Greg, or, or Greg's, daughter, to get Greg's it daughter just built one out there, and I don't really okay. know. I know, I, I know that they had discussed it one time to try to get it done. Because okay. I think they, they looked at it, they're, they're right outside of town. Yeah. Um, right. I'll, I'll pull those ordinances. I think. Okay. If you got a book from the um, Water Authority, I think it's in there. But I'll, I'll get it. Okay. Uh, I don't know if anybody. <clears throat> Town of um, Estill sent this out for the fall festival. I believe they sent an email out. Um, I did, it went to the county. They went to the clerk and the council. Um, it said they not heard anything from anybody. Um, I will make a copy and scan this and send it out tomorrow. When is it? Uh, the mayor's dinner is October the second at six p.m. That was invite only, isn't it? Yes. No dignitary, but not This is invite, invite only. Invite only. Yeah. And this is y'all's invitation. Right. So and they and need that, to know. Full Durham? Full Durham. They need to know. Six. <coughs> what was it sent? I don't know. I mean, they said they sent it to. I'll put the second to what? The second. No. All right, they said they had seen it, but nobody responded, so they were, they yeah, had a problem, I, never, so I don't know. I never received it. I don't think I ever received it. I, I mean, I didn't get it, so, okay. I mean, I, so if I'd have gotten it, got it yeah, if I'd have gotten it, I'd have passed it on. Um, I knew it was coming up, I just didn't know when it was. But that, that's the main thing they want to know, and um, I am going to, I hate to say assume, but there's usually... An application for the art festival, I guess, is as if you want to participate in the parade. parade. That's what you do. Yeah. And when is that? October the. The parade is the fifth. Lineup starts at ten. What kind of parade? It's the Estill Fall uh, Art okay. Festival. How many days is it? Three or two? Uh,
starts on the 28th of September and goes through October 5th. Okay. Well, I said, I we'll scan this and get it out right. tomorrow. And did everyone get their information from the... That went out as an email as Thank well. You. I um, you got it? I don't think I did. I, I got it. But I got all the information, but I didn't get it in the room. I have raid applications in the car if anybody wants it. Let me check, see if y'all on there and invite me. No, I didn't do anything. Not like that. The UMC Shrimp Festival Dignitary Luncheon. We'll follow the parade on Saturday the 21st. So it's, it's immediately following the parade. There's so also a 5K that uh, Saturday morning, the name of councilman would be interested in one. The parade starts at 10. And then the dignitaries lunch will be immediately after. It's going to start at the walkway. Don't know. It does not. This does not say, sir. I, I just got got the email. Uh, 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 I, the only thing I got was the thing for the dignitaries luncheon. Okay. And since this one, I, I want to make sure y'all had gotten this one as well. So all the law has come out to us on email. Yes, sir. Um, so we get all the information put together. It says the luncheon will be held at the municipal complex, so right there at the town, town hall. hall. Yeah. That thing is teeny tiny writing. Typing. Last year it was at the Embassy Baptist Church at their fellowship hall. Which is That's where it was a couple years ago. Um, I think so, sir. They had a prayer breakfast at the Embassy. I don't know how they would do it. I haven't made it to that one. All right. Uh, that's all I have, sir. I think this is our longest meeting of the year, so we'll get moving on. All right, item 14, executive session. We have no exec executive session matter scheduled. Item 15, report out of executive session. We have no executive session matters to report. Item 16, adjournment. Do we have a motion for adjournment? Mm -hmm. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a proper second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Motion carried. Go, oh, you see